Hi, I am Sheila Marie de la Cruz from BSN Tubi. In this return demonstration, I will be performing gastric gavage or gastric tube feeding. Gastric gavage is the introduction of liquid feeding or formula through a tube into the stomach. It is done to prevent fatigue and cyanosis that is apt to occur from bottle feeding. It also provides a safe method of feeding in hypotonic infants and experiencing respiratory distress and infants with uncoordinated suck and swallow, intubated, debilitated, and those with anomalies of the upper and lower digestive tract. So, before doing the procedure, make sure to check the doctor's order, perform hand hygiene, introduce yourself and explain the procedure to your patient, and lastly, provide privacy and comfort to your patient. So, these are the equipment that I will be using in this return demonstration or procedure. So first is alcohol and disposable gloves, an improvised nasogastric tube, improvised feeding fluid, um, improvised normal saline or sterile water, marker, 5 ml syringe, pH paper, improvised hypoallergenic tape, and stethoscope. So let's proceed. Hello ma'am, I am Sheila Marie La Cruz, your nursing assistant. So today we're going to insert a nasogastric tube in your baby um, to help her to feed and receive the nutrients she needs to grow. So is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it's all clear about the nasogastric tube insertion and feeding? Okay, yeah. thank you. After entering the room, you may verify the patient by asking the parent or guardian or checking the ID band. Then you may now perform hand hygiene and don disposable gloves. Then assist or position the patient with a roll diaper placed under her shoulders. A mommy restraint may be necessary to help maintain this position. Then measure the distance from the tip of the patient's nose to the earlobe and to the siphoid process of the sternum. Mark the length on the feeding tube with a tape or with the use of marker. By doing so, this will give us a guideline as to how far to insert the catheter or the tube. You may also have the suction apparatus readily available to clear the airway and prevent aspiration if regurgitation occurs. Then, lubricate the catheter with sterile water, normal saline solution, or water-soluble lubricant. Stabilize the patient's head with one hand. Use the other hand to insert the catheter. Insertion through the nares. Slip the catheter into the patient's nostril and direct it toward the occiput in a horizontal plane along the floor of the nasal cavity. Do not direct the catheter upward. Observe for any respiratory distress. If the patient swallows, passage of the catheter may be synchronized with swallowing. Do not push against resistance. Gently try rotating the tube if resistance is met. If there is no swallowing, insert the catheter smoothly and quickly. Now, test for the correct position of the catheter in the stomach according to institutional guidelines. The first way is you may inject an air into the catheter or the tube while auscultating for a whooshing sound over the stomach. And the preferred method is to aspirate a small amount of gastric contents and test for its acidity by using a pH paper. After that, you may now secure the tube into the patient's cheek using a hypoallergenic tape. If still unsure of the catheter's placement, Obtain an abdominal x-ray. 
Position the infant at right side lying or supine position with head and chest elevated at about 30 degree. Attach the reservoir to catheter and place fill with feeding fluid. Encourage the infant to suck on a pacifier during feeding and hold the infant when possible. If a small residual is obtained, return it to the stomach and subtract that amount from the total amount of formula to be given. If over one half of the previous feeding was aspirated, withhold the next feeding. Do not return or aspirate back to the stomach the notify healthcare provider. The flow of the feeding should be slow. Do not apply pressure. Elevate the reservoir 6 to 8 inches or 15 to 20 centimeters above the infant's head. Feeding time should approximately be 5 ml over 5 to 10 minutes or should last for 15 to 20 minutes. When feeding time is completed, the catheter is irrigated with clear sterile water. Before the fluid reaches the end of the catheter, clamp it off and redraw it quickly or keep in place for the next feeding. Discard the feeding tube and any leftover solution. For the follow-up phase, burp the infant by holding the infant and tapping the back of the infant. Then, place on his right side for at least an hour. Observe patient's condition after feeding. Bradycardia and apnea may occur. Note infant's activity and sleep-wake cycle in relation to feeding. After the procedure, discard all the materials used including the gloves and perform hand hygiene. Documentation Accurately describe and record procedure including tape and size of the tube used, verification of placement, time and feeding, type and amount of feeding fluid given and amount of retained or vomited, and the tolerance of feeding and activity before, during, and after feeding. So that's it for gastric gavage or gastric tube feeding. Thank you for watching.